Hey everybody, it's Niall here with PRN Tech. Today we're looking at a $30 gaming keyboard. I'm not really sure how much gaming you're gonna be doing on this, but that's what it says in the box. For 30 bucks, I mean, you really can't go wrong, right? It's made by eBlue, don't know what they are, and it is the Polygon gaming keyboard. And you can tell that this is a very quality product because if you actually read some of the description of it, for example, the front says, this gaming keyboard is tailor-made for entry-level users. It has high durability and resistance. Your hands will not feel tired even for prolonged use. Plus the highlighted keycaps. It is extraordinary convenient for gamers. Extraordinary convenient. This has to be good. So for 30 bucks, I figured we'd pick it up, got it at our local sort of business store kind of thing. And I have really, really low hopes for this. I'm actually gonna be pretty impressed if it actually works, let alone is functional and usable. Now to be fair, it's been, I don't know, 10 years since I had a gaming keyboard. I had the original Logitech G15. That thing was truly spectacular. And then I also had a Z board. If you uh, don't know what those are, you can take off essentially the whole keyboard and swap it with a different thing for different things. So here you go. Uh, really cheap like plastic here, really cheap cover on this. And, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> There's not much to it. You have, some keycaps here. Looks like to be able to change the WASD and arrow keys from blue to not blue. And really the only feature that this has other than it being a keyboard is it says it lights up. It's a blue light up keyboard. And oh, wow, look at the back of that. It's blue, amazing. Now, obviously we're gonna need a computer to be able to try this. So we're not gonna be able to do it up here in our studio. Oh my God, man, those are thick. So we're gonna plug it in downstairs. Ooh, oh my God. And we're gonna see, is it worth buying a $30 keyboard from a company you've never heard of? Okay, before you get all upset in the comments, yes, I'm using my iMac. It's not a gaming device, it's not a PC. I get it, this is not meant for gaming, but guess what? As much as I regret buying this computer, it's the only one I have right now. So while I'd love to be able to use a PC, I just don't have one. The ThinkPad that we have really doesn't game. And then the server also, actually the whole server cluster sitting right beside me. It's not really meant for gaming either, we've tried. So we're gonna plug in our gaming keyboard here now. Ooh, wow. So the bottom part of the keyboard here has lit up. So far that's it. Um, I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit more. None of the keys seem to actually light up yet, but Maybe there's a driver I need to install. I mean, I know it's a Mac, but maybe there's some software I need to install. Cause really, if it's just the bottom of it, it seems a little misleading. It does say on our very English keyboard here for the blue illumination. Blue illumination is released from the keyboard to give an astonishing effect. It is functioned by just connecting the keyboard to the computer. That sounds very good. Now, when it comes to the rest of the English on here, we've got the product description which says, you just start playing games, so you don't want to spend too much on gaming devices. But you really need a keyboard with all the basic functions, like highlighted keys, so you can exercise full control, having a cool appearance, but practical in use. It would be better if it can sparkle during functioning. That is what this is. Polygon, your best partner in gaming. Now, I highly doubt all that. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't, none of this is lighting up right now. Just the bottom of it, which I think there should be no sensors on it. Okay, so let's open up Notepad and see if we were to go through all the keys here. Yeah, I mean, it seems to work. Uh, hello, my name is Niall and this is a keyboard. God, I mean, yeah, it's not not the greatest tactile feeling I've ever had with a keyboard, but yeah, it could it could be worse, right? It could be a lot worse than it actually is. Um, it's not the most elegant, and I find that the little feet here are a little cheap. You do have two options for it, though. That's basically the second option, and then the third one isn't too bad. I think I'm just disappointed, though because the way that this really sounds is everything should be illuminated. And even if I put the box over it, there's nothing. We will connect it to the ThinkPad after just to make sure. Perhaps, even though it does say 
that it is Mac compatible and designed for Microsoft Windows, it just doesn't seem like we're getting all that feature right now. But what can you do? Now it says it's waterproof too. It's one thing I didn't mention. And maybe it's it's new for me to have waterproofing in a keyboard. I mean, it was new when I had the ThinkPad. There are drain holes in it to allow you to drain out your keyboard if you get some sodi pop in it. Same thing with this, apparently. It says there are drain holes. And yeah, I, I, I can see them. They exist. I don't know if they're functional though, in the same sense. I mean, the ThinkPad ones are pretty innovative, but when it comes to this, not so much. We're gonna see, I mean, we're gonna load up Euro Truck here, which again, I know is not the end all be all game to decide whether or not it is good for a gaming keyboard, but it's the one game that I have installed on here that actually runs pretty well. You know, if you're gonna be buying everything new, then you do need it something. You need a keyboard and a mouse. I'm sure you can get a really basic setup for even less than 30 bucks. Is it is it worth sort of the 30 bucks? I don't know, probably not. I think it also says too that you know, each each key is good for 10,000 clicks. And maybe, I've never worn out a keyboard before, at least from the click perspective, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, for what I'm doing with this, which is really gonna be server and PC deployment, it isn't bad. Am I gonna return it and get my 30 bucks back? I don't think so. I'm actually, yeah, I'm probably gonna hold on to it. It's not that bad. Okay, as I mentioned here, we're gonna just quickly test it on the PC, just in case that there's drivers that would actually allow me to use mm, some of the backlighting that it's supposed to have. So we're gonna see, and I don't have a mouse for this right now, so I have to sort of go in between the computer here and my track point. But let's see, the instructions here don't have much. It says to Start it up, you plug it in, that makes sense. Light indicator, blue illumination. Oh, those a-holes. You look at the instructions here, it clearly says, blue illumination is just their stupid poly, P-O-L-4 G-O-N logo. Like you don't even get actual backlit keypad. I guess for 30 bucks, I shouldn't have expected much, right? But if I Google E, Blue, oh, here we go, www.eblue, oh, E3, L-U-E, what? 3-L-U-E dot com slash int, because it's, it's actually not eblue, Jesus, it's E3-L-U-E, but I guess the three is meant to look like a B. Wow, their website is painfully slow. I think like they have quite a bit of stuff. I don't know if it's very good stuff, but yeah, I'm not even gonna waste my time looking for this because I know, oh, Cobra, that's the other product that they had at Bureau Pro. Anyway, I mean, the keyboard works, right? It's 30 bucks. Uh, it's up to you to decide whether or not it's worth the 30 bucks. I think for me, for what I'm using this for right now, it'll get the job done. I could have saved a, you know, 20 bucks, 10 bucks if I went with something that wasn't gaming. I really don't understand. I guess it's just the blue keys that make it into a gaming keyboard, but there you go. It, uh, it's a keyboard, it's a $30 keyboard. There's not much more to it.